welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and uh, I am always asking what would be fun to create today. What would I like to create and which colours and which pieces would like to combine to create that. And I got this record which I offered to you guys um, the other day in the um, live stream jumped out at me and went me and I looked, picked it up and I started looking at it and I noticed that and I'm not sure how well this is going to come across but the edges are actually heat damaged who knows whether that's from sitting in my studio or that's how it was when it came in the box of rejects from the collector. But definitely heat damaged of some description. So I thought, well, how about I heat damage it some more? <laughs> and some of you will remember that I poured a series of um, records which I made into bowls. Um, some of them were made into bowls and then poured on. Some of them were poured and then made into bowls and it's that last option that I'm going to do in this video so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it leave it to dry and then melt it into a bowl so let's get this party started I've cleaned which side did I clean I cleaned the other side so this is homespun from Ireland. So, thinking of you, Isla, as I'm pouring this, and all you other beautiful people that support me from Ireland. And what colours have jumped out at me? <laughs> We've got my homemade burgundy, which is crimson and cobalt blue mixed, I believe quite runny there's not a lot left but enough for this painting then there's viridian hue um and i was like what else what else what else and nothing else was talking to me nothing else was yelling at me and i was re being really aware of this month's challenge trying not to pick up on the whites or the blacks or the blues or the reds or the yellows so, and then, but unfortunately, it came down to that this record would like me to do a gravy jug sandwich pour with these two colours in white. So, I'm going to say that my spring white is not really white because it's house paint. <laughs> that is really naughty. That is so totally not accurate and so this one doesn't actually meet the requirements for being a this month challenge so what is a sandwich pour i hear some of you newbies asking a sandwich pour is where you have your white bread white then you have your fillings which is our green and our burgundy and then you have another layer of bread hopefully that it's supposed to sit on top but it never does because I've never perfected that talent of layering particularly well but that's okay now you guys will all notice that I did not put in any silicon in there but the cells are already self-generating and I think that is to do with what colors we've got which is kind of cool I have no idea or understanding about specific gravities or densities or any of the other stuff so I don't know if that's relevant but I seem to be getting cells so let's see 
um, when I asked what it would like to be pour style wise it was a traveling ring pour I probably should have this on a hold on two seconds Ta-da! Lazy Susan. Instead of putting it on my tins, I'm going to put it on a Lazy Susan. And then I can just do spiral pour and turn it slowly and just keep doing spiral pour and it will pour itself. How's it getting any better than that? Okay. Uh, start from the inside and work out or outside and in. Outside in, inside out. Inside out actually feels lighter, so we're going to do that. Now, with a gravy jug, because it pours from the bottom, you've got to make sure you don't pour too fast. Otherwise, it will all come out over the top. And that is not what my target is my viridian hue is definitely first out the pot here comes a big chunk of my burgundy oh I like it you'll notice I didn't start in the middle because I had a feeling we were going to get some pretty cool looking stuff straight out the pot and because whatever's in the center is going to be our um, base which nobody will ever see crikey it definitely got green there didn't it I'm just going to go around Okay There is definitely some cell action going on and this Lazy Susan is definitely leaning that way if you're watching what's happening with the paint as it spreads I'm just gonna put a little bit in the middle as well just try and encourage this paint to pull in a bit That's very cool. Just get it to just reach to the edges. When you've got dry patches and you've got wet patches, water will always follow the wet patch. Doug, stop it. Um,
but I'm, I'm, I'm like it, liking it a lot. There are areas of it I definitely like a lot more. Like, it's very bright for you guys. Let me dull it down a bit. That's what I'm seeing. Um, this area over here. Let me zoom you in. Hold on. Stay still. Sorry about that. Oops. All right. So this area up here, I really like. The more white areas, like this ring through here, not so much. But I like the way that these two rings join together. They do a really cool job of hanging out, playing games. It's this centre bit that I'm not, not hugely fussed with, but that's okay. Overall, it looks cool, and there's lots of cells. Anyone would think I'd put silicon in this. Look at it. It's so pretty. I'm hoping it dries a lot darker than this, which I know it does. It's just very pink. Um... Right, pop you back up. And let's torch it. Torture it or torch it. So this, for those of you that are new, is a butane torch, a little flame torch. And because I didn't put silicon in, I'm just using it to pop, although I just sort of think I saw a silicon bubble. Um, just using it to pop any air bubbles. If any of you remember me putting silicon in any of the colours I used, let me know in the comments because this is really behaving as if there's silicon in it. And I definitely didn't. Regretting putting that extra paint in the middle now. I should have just dampened it to help the paint traverse. I love the outside so much I don't really want to tilt it. This is annoying. Maybe if I push in the middle it'll sink and the paint will flow. <laughs> if any of you ever wanted to do that, just bend it, twist it, just a little bit and make it pour in one way not the other <sighs> how's it get any better than this oh it's all going to be on the underside anyway i don't have too much of an issue about that oh that's better i do like it better now <laughs> One day, Samsung will invent a camera that actually captures the colours I'm looking at. Uh, how does it get any better than that? Alright. I really, 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 really like this area. But guess what I also really like? Check out that. Come on, focus. 
That's cool. There's some funky stuff happening in there. All right, I see cabochons coming. Let me go and make a very flat surface to pump, pump this on. And I will be back. Ta-da! It's dry. <laughs> so it's, um, it hasn't quite dried how I was expecting it to. Um, the colours haven't come out as yummy as I was hoping they would. So how does it get any better than this? That's all I can say. I took some photos and I will be playing with um, possibilities with those photos that got taken while it was wet. And um, yeah. Um, but underwhelmed, to be honest. Um, the fly net that I put over them to dry caught only on the edge so it hasn't actually affected the thing but we were going to melt this weren't we so I'm going to pop it in the oven and melt it and see how it goes so I'll be right back once I have done that and we get to see what yumminess has been created um and yeah hopefully it shows up better than i thought because the bit that i don't really like is actually in the middle so if that that's not actually going to show so here we go Ta -da! <laughs> now um if you check in the description there'll be a link to a video on how I do that um uh, previous ones I have used a bowl to push the edges down but I wanted it to get it into that sort of star deliberate star shape and didn't want it to go weird so I just used my hand just um allowed it to soften in the oven and then curled it round shaped it round a bowl that was underneath so um Check out that video that's in the description. It, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, can just turn it around and have a different look each day. <laughs> um, obviously, as it stands right now, it's just a very thin layer of paint and a layer of sellotape that's in there. So if, uh, if you're wanting to put um, water into it i'd highly recommend popping some resin in the base there just to seal that otherwise you're gonna lose your paint as the water seeps through um but this little pot that i made for my aloe vera which some of it's not looking particularly healthy but it sits on top of my fridge can fit nicely into there and you get this cool little pot How's it get any better than that? You just trim your Coke bottle down to below the height of the thing, plant your pot and plant in it, and ta-da! Looking styly. Anyway, so how did the cabochons come out? Mm, not overly excited by these two. They're, they're reasonably pretty, but they're not stunning like some of them have been. They're a little bit blurred. They've got a blurredness to them. Um, there's my one that looks like a um, sheep or a bird or something. So that's those. And uh, so I'm really happy with these. And well, I'm really happy with this. Meh. Okay with these. And uh, what else is possible? So I will be uh, having another video shortly, but um, we've also got a live stream coming up. So if you'd like to be part of that um, and know when it's coming up, uh, sign up on here and I'll give you a um, 24 hours notice email. 
and uh, also if you would like to join that actually with me in voice in real time rather than the slight delay that YouTube live gives us um, then come and join me as a patreon patron um, just $10 a month gets you to be live on, um, on both my videos both my live videos for the month so how much fun can we have what else is possible and I will see you in the next video. I've got something kind of special for you in that one. See you soon. Bye-bye.